Coho salmon are often referred to as silver salmon. They generally weigh 2 to 5 kilograms. The adults will have small black spots on the upper lobe of their caudal fin, and the gums at the base of their teeth and their lower jaw will be white. When in the ocean, they have dark, metallic backs with silver bellies and sides. When they are mature, they are sexually dimorphic. The females are reddish on the sides, and males are generally a brighter red with green backs. Males will also have their upper jaws develop and elongate hook snout, and their teeth become enlarged. Young coho salmon will often have orange-tinted fins, and there is 12 rays in the anal fin. Adult coho salmon will move in the fall to small river tributaries and coastal streams. They prefer mid-velocity water and small gravel. Reds, which are gravel nests, are dug by the females. Eggs are laid here and spend six to seven weeks before hatching. The salmon die once they spawn. Smolts, which are younger fish, migrate to the sea after one to two years in fresh water. They spend around a year feeding on smaller fish and growing before they head back to streams. When in the fresh water, they gravitate towards slower moving riffles and pools where they feed on insects and plankton. Coho salmon are typically found in coastal streams and rivers, as well as the northern Pacific Ocean near the south of BC. They are most common between Alaska and Oregon along the coastline. Within BC, their main home for coho salmon is the interior Fraser watershed. Coho hat salmon is an important part of modern Western, modern First Nations, and traditional First Nations culture. Traditionally, coho salmon was used as a main soup food source for many First Nations communities. The fish provided these communities with vital nutrition and was eaten both fresh in the summer and dried in the winter. It was used as a, as a trade item amongst different First Nations communities and was a key component to their economy prior to European settlement. As well, coho salmon was, and still is, featured in First Nations art, mythology, and legend. They are present in various ceremonies and art pieces, such as totem poles and carvings, and were believed by some to be returning or gift-bearing relatives. In today's day and age, there are First Nations fisheries across, across British Columbia that provide a livelihood to many people, and many communities still use the fish as a large component of their diet. In our modern Western society, coho salmon is important recreationally and is a prized catch across British Columbia. The economic importance of coho salmon across BC is quite large. As I already mentioned, it is fished recreationally, but it is also fished commercially. A 1996 report prepared for the Canadian Department of Fisheries and Ocean assessed its net economic value which is society's benefits minus the cost, at $60 million for commercial fishing and $80 million for recreational fishing. The only population of coho salmon that has an official conservation status is the interior Fraser River population. As of 2016, under COSIWIC, the Committee on the Status of Endangered Wildlife in Canada, they were listed as threatened. However, under SARA, the Species at Risk Risk Act, they are not listed but are under consideration for addition. These declines have been mostly due to overfishing and changes in the freshwater and marine habitat.